Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. I know it's been a while. Things have been pretty crazy with my wedding business. So I've had quite the stall with creating videos for my YouTube channel. But here we go. Uh, this drum table, I actually finished it a couple months ago. It's been posted on my Instagram for a while. I just haven't gotten around to making this video. But it was given to me by another maker, Big Al Schultz from New York Woodworks. You can give him a follow on Instagram. It's NY Woodworks, W-O-R-X. So he gave this to me thinking I could do something with it. And here I am doing something with it. <laughs> so it had a broken leg and the top of it had a lot of scratches and gouges, which is to me minor work. So I decided to take it on and here we go. So I closely inspected the leg and decided what way would be best to glue this onto the base. Should I put the glue on the leg? Should I put it on the base? Well, I decided to go with putting it on the base. I put the glue on the pegs and I wiped it around the peg with my finger because we want the glue to go all the way around and have full contact with the, with the leg. The next step was to clamp this together so that I could hold it in place while drying. And I went with this little clamp and, you know, I did a little trial and error trying to figure out where exactly to put it. Found the perfect spot, squeezed it together, and then I had to wipe away the excess glue again. I let the legs sit overnight and then I removed the clamp the next day and I got to cleaning. I used my Dixie Bell White Lightning degreaser to clean the entire table. And then I took a spray bottle of water and I sprayed it down and I wiped it clean with another rag. And then I took a dry rag and I wiped it dry because you don't want these pieces of furniture to sit wet for any period of time. You always wanna dry them. Don't forget to remove any drawers and clean the insides of the drawers as well. easy to take off, just two screws. I'm gonna take this off before I continue cleaning. I found a stamp on here, Merzman. So I'm gonna look that up because I'm curious. So I'm going to remove that, finish cleaning, and then I'll start sanding. The next step was to remove the hardware and I need to clean underneath the hardware you'd be surprised how much builds up underneath the hardware. It's quite gross. You always want to make sure you remove the hardware and clean underneath before you continue with the project. This was pretty simple to remove. It was just two screws. I grabbed my drill and took them out. And then I put the screws back into the back of the handle so I don't lose them. And then I continued cleaning the the inside of the drawer and the front of the drawer where the hardware was. So it's a little hard to hold the camera and squeeze out the wood filler at the same time, so I put the camera down. But I got the wood filler on. I Glopped it on really good and I'm gonna wait for it to dry and then I'm gonna take some sandpaper to it and smooth it out. I decided to do this little spot over here. I'm not really a fan of this wood filler. I like the Dixie Bell mud a lot better. We'll see how this comes out. I don't see any more spots that really need wood filler, so here's a nice messy spot. I'll come back when this dries. After the wood filler dried, I took some 220 grit sandpaper and I sanded down the wood filler to make it smooth with the top of the table. And I continued to scuff sand the rest of the piece, which is very important before painting, otherwise your paint will not stick especially on old finishes, on old pieces of furniture like this. It's a slick surface and the paint will peel right off after it dries. It's very important to scuff sand your whole piece and my personal preference is to use 220 grit. 
Here I am wiping off all the dust after scuff sanding because of course you don't want dust in your paint. I quickly realized that this piece was definitely gonna be a bleeder, so I had to do two coats of primer before I start painting. Now, what I mean by that is the original cherry stain that was on this piece is going to bleed through whatever paint I put on the piece. So this is a very important step so you don't end up painting it and looking back and going, hey, why does my green look red? For this piece, I went with a white primer because I'm painting it a light green. We don't want the primer underneath to be darker than the color that we're painting the piece. If you're enjoying this video so far, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you. For this piece, I'm going to be using three different shades of green. I have a dark shade, a medium shade, and a lighter shade. Here, I'm painting the legs with the medium shade. Next, I'm taking the darker shade and I'm going to focus on the base. I'm going to paint, paint the whole base with the darker shade. I'm also going to paint the top with the darker shade. I like to leave the drawer in because it gives me good continuity with, with continuing the paint and the pattern that I'm going with because I'm eventually going to be pulling out the dry brush and doing a dry brush blend on this table. So I leave the drawer in, but I do, you can see that I do pull it out a little bit every once in a while to make sure that the paint covers everywhere that it's supposed to. And then you leave it slightly open so it doesn't stick. I focused on the top with the lighter green, or should I say the medium green, not the lighter. So now the legs and the top are going to be the medium green. The base is all the darker green. And then I'm going to go in with the lightest green and I'm going to do a blend on it. Once I got the first coat of paint down, it was, start to, it was time to start blending. I started off with adding a little bit of darker green to the medium green on the legs. I wanted to hit the high points. So I took a dry brush and added some of the darker green to the medium green, hoping for a perfect blend and it came out pretty good. I was happy with it. And then I continued on to blending the base with the medium green over the darker green. Kind of like the opposite of what I had just done on the legs, but it started to look all the same eventually. The base now has all three colors on it blended. It's a little hard to see because it's dark under the table. It still needs a little more light green added to it. The top, I'm now adding the light green kind of just went to town with this, just had fun with it. This is, you know, what I consider the fun part of this project is the blending. So I took a dry brush and the light green paint and I just started adding it and blending it in and just, you know, brushing it on as you see here. And I kind of just kept going until I was happy with the way it looked. Once the paint dried, I came in with a clear top coat and I covered the entire piece with the top coat, except for the hardware. After the clear coat dried, I got out my gold gilding wax and I put some on the hardware. I happen to prefer gold gilding wax over painting the hardware. I think the wax lasts longer, looks better. It gives, it keeps with the vintage feel of the piece of furniture, especially for a piece of furniture like this. And I just prefer it overall.
I went on to add some gilding wax to some of the high points on the piece. I wanted to make it stand out a bit and, you know, break up the green a little and, you know, accentuate the beauty of this piece. So I went up and down the whole base and the legs. So here you can see what I did. So here I'm kind of just adding the gold accents with the gold gilding wax. I just do little dabs with the artist paintbrush until I'm satisfied with how it looks. Um, there's no rule to this. You just put as little or as much as you want until you get the look that you want. I'm trying to accent all the high points. So I'm only dabbing on the high points. Here's the final product. I love this piece. I'm a big fan of green and gold. And if this piece doesn't sell, I'm going to consider keeping it. Hopefully it sells. If you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Please leave a comment below and consider subscribing so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks for watching.